part. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 62 of the In From Japan podcast, the podcast where we talk about the latest news on Japan-developed games and other things in relation to them. Available on YouTube, and in most places, podcasts can be found. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Errol Moss, and with me is my co-host, the Phenomenon from Suriname, Jason Clark. Hey, hey. And uh, before we get into the games we've, we've been playing, we're going to do a little housekeeping. So first... Our past guest, Callie Plaguey, reviews editor at GameSpot, will be uh, leaving uh, her position to go uh, work at a non-media job that she hasn't officially announced yet. Um, so make sure to wish her luck on her future endeavors, and hopefully we'll, we can, we'll have her back sometime in the future Yeah. to talk about whatever she'll be Best doing. of luck to Callie, and uh, we really can't wait to see what she does next. Yeah. Um, and then as of the release of this episode, In From Japan Monster Week has begun. So we're going to have some Monster Hunter Rise content, uh, a brand new podcast series uh, that we'll be announcing on Twitter or we'll have announced on Twitter by the time this comes out, and a couple of other things. So look forward to that. Lots of monsters and kaiju and what have you. All types of different monsters. Yeah. Uh. I know I don't sound that enthusiastic about it, but I'm pretty excited. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, given your history and the things we've covered so far, I, I, I assume this will be a very great ride for you. And there are several stories here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about the uh, Japanese games we've been playing. So I finally went back to Persona 5 Strikers. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know if I technically finished the first jail because it's not because it's a, there's a beat in the story where it's like you're not actually finished and they're trying to figure out why like how the jails work. Mm -hmm. But I beat like a boss. I don't know if it's the bo the final boss of that jail, but you know I've made progress. Is my did point. you not? And I think my issue. Uh -huh, go ahead. My issue before was that I wasn't really leveling up the personas enough. Like, there's a lot more management than you would think in, like, a typical Musou game, I mm -hmm. feel. Because you're, you're making the personas and, you know, fusing them and leveling them up. And then you have to, you know, keep track of your equipment and make sure you're good and make sure you're not too overwhelmed by enemies. So you got to make sure to have, like, healing items and healing uh, skills and such. Okay, but... So it's getting easier. Um, did you continue past the point where you stopped uh, with a dungeon uh, or jail? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is past... Yeah, this is past but where... But in, in the story, it's still um, displayed as, uh, oh, we did not finish it just yet. Well, it's it's like, oh, it it's not doing the same thing. Like, because you know how in Persona 5, after they take the... Like, the palaces, like, just, like, kind of crumble... Uh -huh. And they have to escape. Yeah. Yeah. So that didn't happen. Okay. So, but but the the problems that were caused by the jail are fixed. But the jail is still exists. Uh, so they're trying to figure out why. Uh, maybe it's that you keep um, revisiting this jail for other bosses or other story beats. Yeah, I I don't know if it's Ka yeah that, kind possible. of like how in Persona Three you had Tartarus, and then every night you'd have to. Well, every uh, other night, you'd have yeah. to go back and revisit it, and it adds a new tower. Yeah, maybe. We'll yeah. see. Um, and then I just randomly... Because you know how I wanted to play a turn-based game for mm -hmm. a while? I randomly picked up Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links again. That... Okay, how, how do you go from turn-based game to Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links? Yu-Gi-Oh! is turn-based. It's a card game. Yeah. It's a turn-based card I game. I mean, sure. Every card game is turn-based as far as I, as I can tell. But, but like, uh, yeah, so I was just like, oh, I'll play some of this because I had to restart it anyways because I couldn't transfer my data from a long time mm -hmm. ago. And they added a lot of stuff. Like, they added, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! Zaxel. They added Dark Side of Dimensions, which is the world I'm focusing on. Um... And I'm playing as Kaiba, of course. Um, is it... Uh, and it's fun, and it's such a contrast to... 
at least the Switch version of Link Evolution, because it's so, like, you know, the gameplay is faster, and, you know, it's a mobile game running on P it's It's a PC part of a mobile game, so you can just click through stuff so much faster. You don't have to just stand there waiting, not knowing if it will crash or how long the computer will take. Wow. I mean, I, I never had those problems on my phone, but... Um no, 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 that wasn't the... F the Link Evolution is the Switch game. Oh, you mean the the Switch yeah. game would be crashing. So, uh, okay, yes. gotcha. Um, so that's nice. It's nice It's nice that they're so so much quicker, mm -hmm. too. Are you enjoying it? Um, okay. Yeah. Because it's like, I don't get... Like, I could do, like, several games in, like, ten mm -hmm. minutes and be like, okay, I'm done for the day, or I can, like, keep yeah. going. Yeah. Like, some of the, like, things to unlock to level up the stage in the Dark Side of Dimensions world are kind of, like, aren't, the goals aren't that easy, but it's like, of course they're not, because by the time you get to that world, like, that world came out, I think, after, or maybe the most recently, I might be wrong about that, um, so they would expect most people playing in that world to have played a lot of Duel Links by that point. Yeah. And, you know, have because I had to restart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't have all the cars that I would have. Yeah. Because uh, I didn't... The last time I played, I think, it was, was when they just introduced the GX world. And I want to say that was, like, late 2017, maybe early 2018. Well, that's a long time ago. Yeah. But it's, it's okay. Fun. And then, like, I'm... And then I'm also just... I'm just mostly waiting for Monster Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> so you're kind of, like... As you clearing do. your g gaming schedule uh, for the big release. I know I'm not going to finish Persona 5 Strikers before then, but... That's interesting, because I, I thought you were going to leave that on the back burner for a bit longer. Well, and then I was just like, you know what, I should play it a little bit okay. at least. And, uh, oh. But, uh, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, what have uh, you been up to? Um, the usual suspects. Um, I've been playing Final Fantasy XIV. Um, I did take a, like a break of a few days, uh, but I just started it back again. I cleared a trial today. It's the library trial in Ishgard, or past Ishgard, um, where you have to do something for your Stola's master. Oh. Here's the thing about Final Fantasy XIV. I had to, because I wasn't subbed, mm -hmm. I had to resub to download it on my new laptop. Um, even though it was still connected to my account, like there was, like it wouldn't let me download the rest of it unless I resub. That is new, because um, as far as I know, even if you're an inactive sub, you can just download it and install it. Yeah, I don't know what was going on. Okay, there, but it's not right. Uh, I was just like, that's a little and weird. you, but I'm not. And like, you got the uh, free. Um, game copy off of uh, PlayStation Store, if I'm not mistaken. What? No. no. I don't play on PlayStation. I play on PC. Okay. So did you ever try the free trial then? I I, I think that's how I first started playing. Okay. Yeah. So that makes sense. And your past... So that's why. And your past Heaven's Word. Yes. Okay. Oh, and so that was... That's, that's the reason. Because the, the free trial okay. only goes up to Heaven's Word. Um, and after yeah. that, you'd have to pay a sub to keep uh, playing it but there there was yeah. like i think early last year maybe in january or february you could claim uh final fantasy 14 for free on playstation store so uh, mm. uh, a lot of people uh, got into the game uh that way yeah yeah, so uh, I've been playing that. Um, still a lot of fun. Uh, still intriguing. I think I'll be done with the main quest by next week. Um, maybe even by this weekend. We'll see. Um, furthermore, I've been playing Romantic Saga Reuniverse. Uh, but that's kind of like... Um, it's occupying this, this mindless uh, click-through... Uh, mobile gaming space in my brain so it's it's not like i'm really fully invested when playing it but it, it's still it's still yeah. something i do um i also started up a new character in romancing saga 3 um because 
I kind of got stuck with this character I I previously had. Um, like I mentioned, I, th- mm-hmm. I think it was last episode. Romancing Saga is kind of like a D and D game. Um, so I just kind of figured I'd re-roll a character and see how my adventure takes me, and yeah. I got stuck once again. So <laughs> maybe it's 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 me just uh, not making the right choices. So I'll just leave Romancing Saga and, and Scarlet Graces. Uh, to decide for now and maybe pick it up later this year or something like that and uh Mm -hmm. i finally finished pokemon shield um i didn't know you'd ever finished it no it it, it was around (laughs) last year when when did this came out come out uh last year right or two years ago you you finished the base game. yeah the the base game i i I haven't installed or downloaded or bought the, the dlc yet so yeah mm. the base game um i just kind of wasn't feeling up to it and then i randomly started watching the the pokemon i choose you movie last week and that got me going um oh no the one where pikachu talks uh i mean i i, I for a split second. i haven't gotten to that point yet so i'm i'm, I'm oh. not not that opposed to it weirder stuff have happened in pokemon so you have you hasn't oh you you're like just watching it apart uh yeah i just i think i stopped at around the the half of the movie so i still Mm. have to finish it because i liked the rest of it i Mm -hmm. liked fine i mean it is a good um like summation of ash's first adventures and, and this yeah. is something uh, anime shows do a lot, where they like mm-hmm. rejigger the, the the first couple episodes or first couple storylines and turn it into a movie. Like w- that mm-hmm. that whole reboot universe is a little weird. How so? Because the he only has like in the second mm-hmm. movie he it is he doesn't really even have he still has mostly P- he he just has Pikachu and. Uh, I think one other thing. Mm, it, and then, like, he doesn't catch or have anything else. And I'm like, that's a little interesting. Uh, little well, I mean, I think in the their most recent shows, they want to keep his roster open enough so that he can experiment with... Well, not experiment. Like, he can get to know... Well, yeah. Because in, ca- in Journeys, yeah. he, has, he has a Gengar and a Dragonite and a Lucario and a Surfetched and a Draco yeah. Fish, and he also uses Mr. Mime on occasion. Yeah, so I think that's your that's the reason for it His all. Step dad. Yeah. <laughs> Lol. Uh, so yeah, that's me. I, I play Pokemon Shield. Uh, I finished it. I don't think I'll go into the DLC. Maybe I'll just wait till uh, the the remakes for Diamond and Pearl come out. Because while the the DLC does add a lot more uh life to it it's maybe not enough for me because i'm more of a understand i'm more of a story person and adventure person i don't have to battle um on end or go training my monsters up to uh unimaginable heights I'm, I'm, I'm really easily satisfied with the with the base adventure so we'll see but yeah that's that's all, all right. i've been playing Okay, so now we're going to get into the J-list of recent video game related entertainment news. So first we have official Resident Evil movie title was revealed at SXSW. This is by Benjamin Maltby for Silicon Era. The upcoming Resident Evil movie is titled Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. The, uh, the film's director, Johannes Roberts, revealed the information at the online SXSW event during an interview with IGN. Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City draws inspiration from the first two Resident Evil games and is set in 1998. Viewers who have played the games will recognize familiar settings like the police department, the mansion, and Raccoon City itself. Characters from the games will appear in the film as well. This includes Jill Valentine, Leonis Kennedy, Chris Redfield, Claire Redfield, and Albert Wesker. As you might expect, the five characters will encounter the horrors of a citywide zombie infestation. And then it goes over the cast that we went over a couple weeks Mm -hmm. ago. Release in theaters on September 3rd, 2021. It doesn't really say uh, if it will also release on a streaming service or anything. Um, a Resident Evil Netflix series called Resident Evil Infinite Darkness will also release in 2021 as well. Which is set in t- 2006. That's a lot of Resident Evil news. 
And then there's that other Netflix series. Which one? <laughs> the live action Netflix uh, series okay. that's in development. I mean, the the Resident Evil PR team said that the next uh, live event or like digital event would be featuring a lot of information people have been asking for. So, mm-hmm. uh, fingers crossed. Um. So they're so what you're telling me is they're finally going to port or remake the Resident Evil Chronicles games from the Wii days. Uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> they said uh, be excited. I don't know what that entails. Like <laughs> most other companies would be like, you know, keep expectations in check. We're not going to announce anything big. <laughs> and Capcom's basically like, we're promising you everything. Get ready for everything. <laughs> Get ready for it. Uh, okay, so the uh, next thing is Ultraman titles leaving Crunchyroll March 31st. I gotta update uh, my watching guide for that. Um, this is by Brody Salzman for Tokusatsu Network. Uh, over the last couple of years, Mill Creek Entertainment has been localizing many Ultra Series titles. Last summer, Mill Creek partnered with Tokusau- Tokushatsu to bring those titles to streaming. Now fans of Ultraman are running out of time to catch up on six older titles through Crunchyroll before they're they're removed on March 31st. Ultraman Gaia, Deed, Ginga, Nexus, Orb, and Ultraman X will no longer be available through Crunchyroll. This also means those titles won't be accessible through the Crunchyroll channel on its Verve streaming service. In addition to the removal of these Ultra Series titles, three Makoto Shinkai titles and the second season of Love Life School Idol Project will also be leaving the service. Uh, so, Ultraman, Orb, Jeed, and X are already on Shout Factory, the Tokushatsu website for free. Mm-hmm. So if you want to watch those, you got a place. Gaia is not anywhere else yet, I don't think. It may be on the Toku Amazon Prime add-on channel, but the subtitles might be of not so great quality. Uh... Fun fact about Ultraman Gaia is the the creator of Ultraman Gaia also was the main writer for the third one of the main writers for the third season and best season of Digimon. Oh, is that Digimon Tamers? And, yes. Okay. And also did Serial Experiments Lane and some other notable stuff. Um, and then uh, Jenga. Or Ginga. Ginga I actually started because Ginga is very... Sh- Ginga and Ginga S are 12 episodes each. So you can finish that before March 31st, mm. probably. <laughs> so I probably will. They're probably all consolidating it under the Tokushatsu uh, brand. Yeah, that's what I would yeah. think. Or maybe uh, Crunchyroll just had a license that... But also, that w- <laughs> not only that, but Subaraya also made their own streaming service in mm. Japan. And, you know, they're uploading episodes to YouTube. Yeah, so it could be that the license just ran out and they decided not to renew it. Oh, interesting enough, they will still have... Crunchyroll does still have... Uh, I'm not sure if they have Gridman anymore. Uh, but they will still have the Kaiju Ultra Girls... Or the Kaiju Girls spin-off series. I think Gridman is Funimation. Funimation. Yeah, uh, or it could be that Gr- Gridman does still exist on Crunchyroll, but only for North America. Uh, I don't actually know if it's on Crunchyroll, but uh, I'll check for you. I won't matter soon. Like, it won't matter that much soon enough. Because <laughs> of uh, well, Sony. Well, wait, Gridman is—is is that also leaving? No, oh, okay. no. I mean, no. I mean, because Gridman is. Because Funimation and and Crunchyroll are both owned by Sony. Yeah. Um, There's like a legal case going on about that or something that I heard about. Is it like an um, antitrust case, like when companies merge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what oh, it was. Okay. Yeah, they were just checking. Um, and then next in in from Japan J list. This is from Twitter from Team Common Rider. In 2021, Common Rider turns 50. Join us April 3rd through the 10th for Rider Week, a week celebrating all things Common Rider. There will be live streams, movie premieres, guests, and announcements in collaboration with Toei Tokusatsu World Official. Stay tuned. Uh, so that's good. And also, on that note, Common Rider Amazons, the Amazon produced Common Rider adult web series, is going to be going off Prime, I believe, also on the 31st. Huh, that's interesting. 
It might just be, it might, part of it might be a, I'm hoping mm -hmm. that part of the announcements might be official Blu-ray, re English subtitle Blu-ray releases. Okay. I mean, the way they've been pushing the, the, the Kamen Rider and Ultraman series, it, it kind of feels that way, so. Yeah, they're different, they're different companies, but. Yeah. But yeah, the way they've been pushing more of the big tokusatsu. Sentai still has a bit of uh, issues, but what can you do? Uh, besides just support the official release yeah. when you can. <laughs> um, and then last story, last tokusatsu story, Inferno, Inferno Girl Red combines Japanese tokusatsu action and teen superhero drama. This is by Jesse Shadeen Shadeen for IGN. Between licensed comics like Boom Studios, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and Marvel's The Rise of Ultraman, and creator-owned books like Radiant Black, the tokusatsu genre is thriving in the comic book world right now. Now one of the minds behind The Rise of Ultraman is delivering a new take on this popular formula with an original graphic novel called Inferno Girl Red. Inferno Girl Red is an unusual blend of tokusatsu, tokusatsu action and teen superhero drama with a healthy do uh, dose of British boarding school intrigue thrown in for good measure. The book follows Cassia Costa, a troubled teen genius who finds her native Apex City stolen away by a demonic cult. Cassia is given the chance to win back her home when a magical dragon bracelet suddenly affixes itself to her arm. However, there's one important catch. The bracelet is powered by the wearer's belief, and the pragmatic Cassia is hardly the type to put her faith in the supernatural. Co collaboration between Rise of Ultraman co-writer Matt Groom and Captain Marvel artist Erica D'Urzo with tokusatsu expert Kyle Higgins who helped on uh, I almost said Infinity War not Infinity <laughs> War <laughs> Shattered Grid Shattered Grid ba basically the same Power thing Ranger, basically Grid. the same Rise thing. of Ultraman Rain of Black okay don't don't no <laughs> no it's not um, the creative team also includes colorist Igor Monti, letterer Becca Carey, and design group for the people. Working on the story for about three years, and uh, there's a bunch of other stuff. Okay, I don't want to go through all of it, but go read more about that. Support Tokusatsu Comics, too. It's, if I'm not mistaken, it's, uh, a Kickstarter that's preparing to launch. Um, so there aren't many details yet on how you could get copies like the, the the graphic novels being offered at, as a kickstarter exclusive hardcover yeah, yeah. and uh, one of the editors for the book is Kyle Higgins who has yes that's right. who's written uh, Power Rangers Ultraman um, Ultraman and Radiant Black. Batman comics I think he did Radiant yeah. Black Oh he's on Batman comics yeah, too he, Oh yeah he did uh, didn't he do Nightwing Yes stuff? he did the new 52 Nightwing if I'm not mistaken yeah, I remember I had a friend in college who was really into that. Yeah, it was, it was a really good run. Yeah, he really like revitalized Power Rangers for an older audience. Is great. Yeah. Not even the older, because like you could still be a teenager and read those comics. Yeah, they've well. Uh, I wouldn't say they're super kid friendly. They've recently, but like, yeah, they've recently rebooted it so to be more accessible again. Um, so if, if you're a new fan wanting to get into the world of Power Rangers by comic books, are, yeah, yeah. Right now there are two concurrently running series. I believe yeah. there's Mighty Morph. It's split into two: Mighty Morphin and then just Power Rangers. Yeah, one focuses on the Power Rangers and the other focuses on like an older team, but with a different mission and yeah, um, as they grow older. So it focuses on the Mighty Morphin ones. Focuses on the second team of Mighty. So yeah, you know you yeah. have the uh, what is it? The Ninjetti Rangers. Adam, Adam, no, not that yet. Uh, Adam, Aisha, and well, they ultimately Rocky. become the Ninjetti Rangers. I don't know if they're gonna do that. I'm, but I mean, they do have the thunders. I mean, so th that could happen. There's a lot of nostalgia wrapped in the first movie, so it'd be a shame if they didn't. Yeah, I, I mean, I wonder if they do that separately, just because they they can do, get away with all the multiverse stuff. That is true. <laughs> um, I'll have to do a podcast about Tokusatsu comics at some point. <laughs> Bur uh -huh. um, all right, moving on to recommended content. 
uh, content other than news from the past week listed out. Links in the description. We have father of PlayStation, Ken Kutaragi, on rumors, the industry, and Nintendo by Oni Dino for Silicon Era. The best Game Boy Advance games to play in 2021 by Silicon Era staff. Assembling Alice Bethan? Is it? Let's hope so. If it's wrong, please yeah. correct us. Bethan Walker on giving life to Final Fantasy XIV's best character by Jade King for The Gamer. Review, Monster Hunter Rise is one of the best entries yet by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era. Five Things We Learned About New Pokemon Snap by Evan Langer for GameSpot. So I don't know if if Evan actually wrote the is the author, but he was the one narrating the video. Uh, okay. And I didn't find I didn't see a written one. Um the have the disappearance of Ultraman Tiga which is Vintage, Hen- Vintage Henshin Extra by Mock Dent over on YouTube. Um, very interesting how the rights to Ultraman Tiga are all messed up because uh, the actor is one of the was one of the people one of the guys in the band V Six. Mm-hmm. Uh, who they've done a lot of anime openings like they did the first Inuyasha opening I think one of the endings the Yashahime opening uh, one of the One Piece openings a lot of stuff Okay. Um, but it's a, it's, fasc- it's a fascinating look into all that uh, Asian American game developers are dreaming of their own Minari moment by Matt TM Kim for IGN it was a really good informative article yeah I still have to start it but uh, yeah it, yeah, it's very, it's pretty long, but it's it's good. <laughs> uh, Story of Seasons localizers are driving the series' newfound celebration of same-sex relationship by Reb Valentine for IGN. Uh, Dota's Dragon's Blood Season 1 review by Miranda Sanchez for IGN. Because Miranda, she knows a lot about Dota and she knows a lot about anime. She's probably <laughs> so that's the kinda- biggest Dota fan I know of among probably the best person to, to write a review yeah. for that. Um, as like, I know we don't usually highlight, I want to highlight these stories on IGN because, you know, I like these three people and, you know, IGN's been getting kind of negative press for a different story. <laughs> and I want to highlight these stories that maybe don't, aren't getting as many clicks as they deserve. Mm, yeah. Not that that other one do- uh, doesn't deserve clicks, but it's like the more positive well, stories. Well, uh, it is it's a it whole. is uh, something focused on an Asian uh, population yes. um, concerning six yes. days uh, in Fallujah, and yeah. uh, IGN kind of had an exclusive preview on the game, or did have an exclusive preview on Although, the game. Although, which is interesting, because Reb did actually a really good piece before that one came out yeah so also for IGN. yeah so uh the whole uh reasoning behind showcasing that has been uh criticized uh by peers and by others outside the industry so uh, it's, it's a really interesting discussion and uh yeah um we'll have to see but definitely read hmm. If you're interested in that, definitely read Reb's article on that. Yeah, and um, Rami um, Ishmael also. And Rami yeah, Ismail yeah, has, yeah. A, has a lot of threads on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then our last thing, is, um, which we'll have to do with our main topic, is uh, Sony shutting down old PlayStation stores portends a dark digital future by Kenneth Shepard for fanbite. Yep. All right, so next we're moving on to the news rundown, so I'll let the bearer of bad news and Shinigami take it away. Uh, Bankai. Uh, first up, we have Reggie Fizame left the GameStop Board of Directors. This is by Jenny Lada for Silicon Era. Reggie Fizame is no longer with GameStop. Back on April 20th, 2020, the former Nintendo of America COO and president joined the company's board of directors. However... He will leave his post in the near future at the GameStop 2021 annual meeting of stockholders, which will be held on around June 2021. Shout out to IGN. When Fizame joined the GameStop board of directors, it was part of an effort to help build up the company. He appeared as an independent member. Also, when he joined, it was expected that people would join... uh, People who would join, excuse me, would only remain for around a year. We did not know that. Or I did not know that. Um, yeah, so this is a thing that's going to happen. It 
it doesn't have to mean anything bad. It could also mean that Reggie, um, as he has been doing for the last couple of years, is, is more on um, in it for an advisory position. So I don't think he, he's looking for a new big comeback just yet. Um, but yeah, we wish him all the best. Yeah, that well, might be a sinking ship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, there are a lot of things going on behind the scenes uh, that we don't know of. Um, if you apparently that financial meeting was really weird. Uh, it amounts to a whole lot of nothing, according to Rebecca Valentine. Yeah. She covers also according to Tamar. Yes, yeah, uh, she covers a lot of the business end of the industry, and mm-hmm. uh, she, I think, every year she listens in on the GameStop uh, uh, yes. investor call, so uh, she'd know. <laughs> Okay, back to the more positive yeah, stuff. Yeah, in other news. Sony and RTS own EVO, and EVO Online 2021 is on the way. This is by Jenny Lada for Silicon Era. EVO lives as Sony and RTS announced the two companies now own the event. Co-op founders Tony and Tom Cannon also issued a statement about the acquisition on Twitter, which confirmed a commitment to take a stand against abuse and harassment. Sony also announced Evil Online will be held August 6th to 8th, 2021, and August 13th to 15th, 2021. Uh, wait, did I say that right? Yeah. Um, you can click on the article for a full breakdown of the details and, of course, the statement made by Tony and Tom Cannon. Um, something I saw recently was that RTS isn't um, exactly... A, something else entirely like a different company but more like an umbrella company overseeing evo um for sony if i'm not mistaken um let's see if there's anything no there's nothing else so i i guess that should be correct but if i'm wrong please chime in in the comments or uh as a question okay yeah. do you have any thoughts on evo um, it's not I mean, it's not restricting. It's interesting because you see, uh, you know, you see Microsoft doing these big purchases. It's like, oh, so I wonder what Sony's going to do. And then they co bought Evo, I guess. I mean, the, the, and, the, and the uh, thing is, um, it's probably uh, like a good injection of support for a tournament that has most, mostly been like independent up till now. And yeah. Sony can. And they're not. Mm-hmm. And, and like just because they're doing just because it's Sony, it doesn't mean like oh they're only gonna do PlayStation games now. No, they still said they were open. Yeah, but to you're stuff. most likely going to be seeing Sony banners uh, emblazoned left and right. Yes, kind of like when you mm-hmm. watch a uh, football game or a soccer game and you have like uh, yeah. PlayStation ads mm-hmm. on the side. So uh, it's it's kind of good uh, marketing you know, for them. It was funny because we were. Uh, like the i want to say the night or the day after this news broke um <laughs> i was watching uh, one of those mystery science theater 3000 gamma mm-hmm. movies with a friend of mm-hmm. mine <laughs> and in the background of like a stadium you see like a little sony banner <laughs> <laughs> they're everywhere i was like oh um but yeah so that's interesting yeah uh, next story. Override 2, real quick one. Override 2 Super Mech League DLC character Black King now available. The game's first playable kaiju. This is by Saoramano for Gamatsu. Override 2 Super Mech League downloadable content character Black King from Ultraman is now available alongside cross-platform matchmaking publisher Modus Games and developer Modus Studios Brazil announced. Uh, Black King brings a bevy of slashing, stomping, and chomping attacks to the arena, giving him an arsenal of powerful melee attacks. Black King is a ravenous kaiju from the Ultraman anime and also the larger Ultraman series, with the power to rip enemies to shreds with ease. The character follows Ultraman and Bemular as the third of four Ultraman characters coming to the game, with Dan Moroboshi releasing in the coming months. Uh, They also added uh, cross-platform matchmaking between Steam, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Xbox Series S. Are you still playing? So you might... Get some gameplay footage of that. Are you still playing it? For Monster Week. I mean, uh, every so often. Not like a ton. Mm -hmm. But, like, it's just one of those 
it, it's kind of like a junk food game where it's just like fun to play every once in a while. Yeah. Um, it's not like I want to say it's super deep or anything, but it'll be fun to stomp around as a kaiju with slightly updated graphics from than War of the Monsters. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. Next up is Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remastered launches May 25th in the West for PS4, Switch, and PC. This is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. Real quick, my Twitter handle is kind of a, a pun take on Shin Megami Tensei. Um, I kind of wanted it to be Shin Megami uh, Tensei, which would kind of translate to new... A uh, glass, uh, g- glasses guy with a genius intellect, kind of. Uh, it, it doesn't really have the same weight as Shin Megami Tensei, but I thought it was 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 funny. But maybe it's not that funny, so I just st- stuck with Shin Megami Kun. Um, so fun fact for you all. Uh, continuing with the story, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster will launch for PS4, Switch, and PC via Steam on May 25th in the West for $49.99 US dollars, Atlas announced. The PC version is newly announced. A digital deluxe edition will also be available for $69.99 US dollars, which includes the following. A full game download, exclusive access to the game four days early on May 21st, a Maniacs pack that adds Dante from the DMC series, a Chronicle pack which adds Raido from the Devil Summoner series, um, a Merciful difficulty which is an easier difficulty by all accounts. I haven't played this game yet so I, I wouldn't be able to tell you if it's really that difficult. Uh, Mercy and Expectation map pack. I've heard, I've heard it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But- and... Then there's also the Shin Megami Tensei so, background music pack. Do you think? Mm-hmm. I was talking to a friend about this. Do you think the price is a little much for a for a remaster of a? I don't know how old this game um, is. Um, I think it's like twenty years at this point, maybe. Yeah. Um, is it? M- so do you think like fifty is 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 too much for that kind of thing? It's listen. Pr- uh, game pricing is is or has been. Uh, a very subjective uh, point of of contention. Uh, it really depends on how you view your dollars yeah. worth. I can yeah. like I can understand my friend's point of view, and, and he said like it should be something more like thirty. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. I mean, but we had this discussion. I think uh, last month, what was coming out? It was uh, the 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 Metopia game. I think. Oh, yeah, 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 Metopia. And what was the other game? Uh, another remaster. Uh, I'm kind of blanking on it. But it it was us arguing like, yeah. oh, yeah, it's a remaster, but that doesn't mean work didn't go into it. Uh, so Skyward Sword? Yeah, Skyward, Skyward Sword. Sword. So, like, Skyward Sword, they re, uh, redid the mechanics for modern consoles, yeah. updated the, the graphics, whatnot. So, it... it it's sh- it sure warrants then that price, but then we saw Metopia with fifty dollars, and we were like, "Oof, don't know about that, Chief." Um, so it, it's yeah. totally a subjective thing. Um, also, this game is also on Steam, so it's gonna go on sale and no- and like eventually, and it, like you know. Yeah, I think within a month you'll see it on sale. Um, Atlas Games go on s- that's true, go huh? on sale. Oh yeah, very that's true, often. Persona But did. besides that, it's it's stuck on Switch and PS4. It's not a next gen uh, console release, so I think yes. they'll be trying to push people to buy uh, as much uh, mm-hmm. last gen copies as possible. I'm probably, I'm probably going to get the physical, go for the physical version of this. Oh, um, I'm not sure which system. I'm thinking PS4, mm-hmm. but I think it just because uh-huh. I, I have more faith in that running. <laughs> I mean, I know it's a port of an older game. But still, uh, we'll see. Um, I'll probably s- get the Steam or Switch version, but we'll see. Uh, but back to the question you asked me, I say, you know what? On a base level, games costing money is a difficult uh, balancing yeah. act. Uh, uh, working on a game, developing a game, takes a lot of time, takes a lot of effort. And people aren't always rightly compensated for that time and effort. So if something is too expensive for you, 
that's okay to say but something costing the way yeah. it costs that's also part of the business it's it's not the 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 bane of all existence is not like evil incarnate it's it's just a yeah. thing of business it's it's not that bad mm-hmm. i say I, i'd say yeah but yeah looking forward yeah. to this game okay next up is you uh, yeah next strategy rpg fairy tale guild masters announced for ios and android due out this spring in japan and i'm sure it'll get localized by Saramano for gamatsu noa oh no noa tech <laughs> has announced yeah, not Nintendo. Yeah, America, I was, I was thinking like, uh, I don't know about but that. But it's all, it's all the letters are capitalized. Okay, and there's a period between Noah and Tech. So, <laughs> Noah Tech has announced strategy RPG Fairy Tale Guild Masters for iOS and Android. It will launch as a free-to-play title with in-app purchases this spring in Japan. Games cast includes Natsu Dragneo, Lucy Harphelia, Happy Gray, Full Buster, Urza Scarlet, Windy Marvel, Carla, and more. So we'll we'll see. Um, There's a, oh, are you are you still playing the fairy tale RPG on Switch or PS4? No, after I finished it, or the PS4. Mm-hmm. No, after I finished it, I was done. Okay, well, I think this not bad. I think this could be a very big release on mobile because the Seven Deadly Sins game is really popular on mobile. Um, I think it's gonna be a like I'm expecting it because it's an RPG. I'm expecting it to be like. One of the Dragon Quest mobile games a little bit. Mm. Just with the gems and the... Not not Dragon Quest. Not that specifically. Mm-hmm. Just like the the mobile RPG... The free-to-play mobile RPGs we've seen uh, release recently. I would not be surprised if it was more like a, a pared-down version of the console game that, that came out recently. Mm, um, no. That's possible. But we'll see. But it depends on... Because remember, the, the console game starts in the middle of the story... This could do like this could do arcs as events, yeah. Or it could do it's, it's, it could do a lot it's of different. It's definitely going to start from the beginning, um, and then keep it going uh, as gacha games are wont to do. But I meant in in terms of the mechanics of, of how you battle. Oh yeah, yeah. In <laughs> mechanics, well, maybe because the uh, it depends on if it has the movement or not. Oh, I, I, I or the p- positioning like. The the Seven Deadly Sins game on mobile has a lot of the animations from the console release. Is it? Yeah. Is it the same developer? No, it's probably not the same developer. Uh, but I'll look it up later. Uh, okay, next up is Capcom announces Resident Evil Village specs and open beta dates for Reverse. This is by Andrew Kia or Kaya. Please correct us. <laughs> this is for Silicon Era. Capcom has announced the open beta dates for Resident Evil Reverse, along with a revamp portal page for the Resident Evil franchise and specs for Resident Evil Village. The open beta for Reverse will start from April 8, 2021 and last until April 11, 2021. Players will be able to pre-download the game from April 5, 2021. Shout out to 4Gamer. Like the closed beta that ran back in January, playing the open beta will require a Capcom idea Please stop doing this game companies and playable console device. Additionally, users that participated in the closed beta will be able to play the open beta without having to re-download. The game will be available for PS4, Xbox One, and PC via Steam. You can check out the full details on the official open beta announcement page. So yeah, um, I don't have a PS5, so I'm not getting into this. I could maybe run it on my PC, but. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see. Next up is Japanese trademarks. Katana Engine by Koei Tecmo, Lost Judgment by Sega, and the Centennial Case by Square Enix, and more. This is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. A new set of Japanese trademarks have gone live, including a potential new engine in development at Koei Tecmo and possible new titles from Sega and Square Enix. Um... You can click on the article for a full breakdown of what's coming. Um, Koi Tecmo has, as we mentioned, the Katana engine. Konami Digital Entertainment has the Keisatsukan. This is the Japanese title for the arcade and PlayStation 2 game, Police 911, Police 24-7. That's going to go over well in the West. Um, 
Sega has Horia Tail and Lost Judgment, sure. which could be a reference so, or... S- so people thought hmm. it might be related to Judgment. Yeah. But you also have to remember that in Japan, Judgment is called Judge Eye. Yeah. So, uh, like I said... That doesn't mean that doesn't mean it's not related to Judgment. Mm. They could just call it Lost Judgment. Yeah. Because they have a more international audience. Now. Yeah, that was what I was going to uh, say. So, um, yeah, it's, it's highly likely it'll be something. Um, who knows? Make Dead Souls Kiwami. We'll see. I mean, they did say that now that Ghost of Tsushima is a reality, um, um, Ishin and the older games might be more likely um, um, uh, shoo-in for a Cause I was, port uh, in Western areas. Because I was thinking like a, like a Dead Souls Kiwami where it has... Local and online co-op, mm-hmm. a co-op Yakuza mm-hmm. game where you fight zombies. That sounds very fun and ridiculous. And you're all about that. Um, yes. The Centennial case uh, for Square Enix, a Shijima story, and Haru Yukite Retrokitika. That's that's I don't know. What that's that a is. very Square Enix name. <laughs> um, so uh, I shouldn't be too surprised. Uh, okay. Next up is Niantic and Nintendo announced Pikmin mobile app designed to make walking more fun. Okay. Um, this is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. Pick up, pick them in, go. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> it's going to be so confusing. Pokemon Go developer Niantic <laughs> and Nintendo have announced a partnership to jointly develop mobile apps that combine Niantic's real-world augmented reality technology with Nintendo characters, the company announced. The first title in development is based on the Pikmin franchise, with gameplay activities designed to encourage walking and make it more enjoyable. The Pikmin app will be published by Niantic as a first title created by Niantic Tokyo Studio, which was established in April 2018 and launched later in 2021. You can click on the article for a full breakdown and a statement. I mean, this could. You can always call it Mm -hmm. Pikmin Walk, like Dragon Quest Walk. I would say they could call it Pikmin Move, but that sounds like something from the yeah no <laughs> no, no, no no weird PlayStation Three PlayStation Move day. I mean this this could pick Pikmin Travel. This could be fun. We'll see. Pikmin, get your butt off the couch. Yeah, n- not that on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next story: Scarlet Nexus says will carry over from the PS4 to PS5. This is by. Jenny Lana for Silicon Era. There's good news for people who might end up playing Scarlet Nexus on both the PS4 and PS5. They won't have to start from, from scratch on each one. Scarlet Nexus director Kenji Anabuki confirmed via Twitter that saves will carry over from one version to the other. Anabuki brought this up when talking about how the game will work if people start on PS4 or Xbox One, then move to a PS5 or Xbox Series X. He reminded people that it supports smart delivery on Xbox systems. He also pointed out that physical PS4 copies can get a free PS5 version. That's when he also mentioned that the PS4 Scarlet Nexus save can migrate over to the PS5 version of the game. Uh, That wasn't the only recent Scarlet Nexus update, however. Mm. The other one had to do with the recently announced anime adaptation. Bandai Namco confirmed that that it would appear worldwide summer 2021 back then. Later, Funimation came forward and confirmed via Twitter that it would offer the show for people to watch. So that's that's neat. And then we have a second Scarlet Nexus story, again by Jenny Lada for Silicon Era. They have Banda Namco announced an incentive to sign up for a Scarlet Nexus email newsletter. DLC weapons. People who visit the official website will get a set of equipment for playable characters. While the initial announcement only showed five items for Kasane Randall, the latest tweet confirmed and showed the five Yuito Sumeragi weapons too. Signing up is free, and as expected, ask for the preferred platform for the Scarlet Nexus Weapons DLC code. The PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Steam are all listed as options. Kasane's five weapons are different projectiles, while Yuito will get five extra swords to use in-game. There's a closer look. Um, This is one of multiple equipment or customization add-ons being offered as some sort of incentive. For example, there's a general pre-order bonus that gives people the audio battle attire for Kasane and Yuito. Yuito, a dream catcher, a face vision seal, and a shoulder baki. Digital Deluxe Edition also comes with exclusive add-ons like the red battle attire and cosmetics. 
Uh, okay. It's coming out on yeah. those platforms on June 25th. Next up, we have Microsoft in talks to buy Discord for more than 10 billion US dollars. I hope this, they updated that story. This is by Dina Bass and Katie Roof for Bloomberg Tech. Yeah. Let's see. Microsoft Corp is in talks to acquire Discord Incorporated, a video game chat community for more than $10 billion, according to people familiar with the matter. Discord has been talking to potential buyers and software giant Microsoft is in the running, but no deal is imminent. Said to people who ask not to be identified because the discussions are private. Discord is more likely to go public than sell itself, one person said. Representatives for Microsoft and Discord declined to comment. VentureBeat reported earlier on Monday that Discord was engaged in sales talk. Um, I guess this could be better than Skype and Microsoft Teams. Um, but if Mixer is any indication, maybe hold. Yeah, people are getting worried about that. Hold. However, uh-huh. there have been updates that said Discord was more likely to go public yeah, I, than be sold off to Microsoft. Yeah, I, I, I just read that bit. Um, so we'll see how this turns out. Um, yeah. Let's see. Next up is Final Fantasy XI reboot development officially canceled. This is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. Nexon has officially canceled development on mobile MMORPG Final Fantasy XI Reboot, which was in joint development with Square Enix, GameBiz.jp confirmed. Both companies determined that the game did not meet the quality standards expected by fans of the Final Fantasy series for creative, from a creative perspective, and agreed to reallocate development staff to other projects. Um, Final Fantasy XI-R was announced in March 2015 and originally planned for release in 2016. Um, while we got a first look at the game that year, the first direct feed screenshots would not be released until May 2018. Okay. Um, not... I didn't know there was, like, a thing in development. You didn't? Huh. I had no okay. idea. Um, I mean... Or I forgot. <laughs> I think this is not a bad thing at all. Um, it sucks that... Well, Final Fantasy XI is officially done with development, quote unquote. Uh, it's still getting some sco- story content and updates, but it's, yeah. it's not an active development as is 14. So um, mm. maybe changing it to mobile platforms um, would be too much of a change from what 11 was. Uh, Possibly. So, yeah, who knows? Um, Maybe it's just not fun to play on a mobile phone. Uh, but yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of a bummer. Uh, next story. Monster Hunter Ro- Rise Day 1 patch to fix bugs. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era. Capcom has released details regarding the Day 1 patch for Monster Hunter Rise. This includes the size of the patch and what the Day 1 patch will implement for players. The Day 1 patch will allow access to content from the deluxe version of the game and from Amiibo as well. Additionally, this patch will fix various bugs in Monster Hunter Rise. However, these bugs have not been detailed on the official patch notes webpage. Capcom mentions that users will need to make sure that they have enough space on their Nintendo Switch for the patch. The Day 1 patch for Monster Hunter Rise is roughly 600 megabytes with the digital release of the game around 8 gigs. Access to the internet is required to download the Day 1 patch. Additionally, the post outline outlines that those without internet will still have access to local multiplayer. However, every player must have the same version software if they would like to engage in local co-op. Those of you who would like to play online would all, will, will will also no, it says with also, but it's supposed to say will also need to have a Nintendo Switch online subscription. Okay. Um, yeah, Kazuma, he was uh, streaming uh, Monster Hunter Rise a little this morning. Oh, that's cool. I did the review for it for Silicon Era. Uh, I was saying it it actually runs pretty well on Switch. Yeah, I saw a few reviews, um, and it is kind of astounding that it's that level of fidelity on a Switch. Well, I feel like Capcom has... So Capcom has a lot of experience, you know, uh, or at least the Monster Hunter team especially, Mm -hmm. uh, 
making games for PSP and 3DS, and then they ported one of their 3DS games to Switch. Yeah. So I figure, like, yeah, th- they probably would know how to it's but like figure out the ins and outs of like a it's also device like that a little easier. It's also probably that the RE engine is very scalable at this point. So uh, yeah. that's why they've had such uh, success uh, developing the game. Okay. Uh, next up is fan favorite X Bethesda director um, Ikumi Nakamura opens in the studio. This is by Jordan Alleman for IGN. Fan favorite ex Bethesda director Ikumi Nakamura has announced that she is opening her own indie studio and is developing a new game. A short documentary from GameSpark and Archipel, which is available on YouTube, follows Nakamura as she tours abandoned buildings in Japan. Nakamura revealed that she left Evil Within developer Tango Gameworks due to health troubles. Quote, I started wondering whether there wasn't a way for me to make games while feeling better. Uh, she says, I took the decision to quit before it was too late. After leaving, Nakamura received over 2,000 messages on LinkedIn offering studio visits and support. She used these opportunities to understand, quote unquote, what made a good working environment. You can click on the article for a full breakdown and also visit the video on YouTube by GameSpark and Archipel. Um, it's a very good video. Hmm. Okay. Next story is Godzilla Mobile Games announced it's scheduled to release in 2021. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era once again. Toho Games announced that three Godzilla Mobile Games are scheduled to release worldwide in 2021. Run Godzilla, Godzilla Destruction, and Godzilla Battle Line are the upcoming titles. Additionally, Run Godzilla is immediately available to audiences outside of Japan. A release date for Japanese audiences is scheduled for some time in June 2021. Pre-registration is currently open for Godzilla Destruction and Godzilla Battle Line. Toho Games released a trailer for all three Godzilla mobile games, which showcased a few seconds of gameplay from each of the three titles. Godzilla Destruction will allow players to destroy cities with ease as they take the role of the King of the Monsters. Godzilla Battle Line will pit players against one another in strategic action using their own teams. You can watch the reveal trailer for all three games below. Run Godzilla takes a different turn from the other two destruction-based mobile games. In this mobile game, you can raise Godzilla for a more casual experience that features systems like monster races. Additionally, it shows a village coming together to raise the monster as a group. Uh, Godzilla Battle Line and Godzilla Destruction will release for Android and iOS devices sometime in 2021. Run Godzilla is immediately available to audiences outside of Japan. Oh, I did not know that. Well... Interesting stuff. I'll see if my phone can run. <laughs> okay, next up is Melty Blood Type Lumina announced for consoles. Uh, this is by Jenny Lada for Silicon Era. A new Melty Blood entry is in the works. Type Moon revealed Melty blah. Type Moon revealed Melty Blood Type Lumina for the PS4, Switch, and Xbox One. In Type Moon Ace Volume 13, it will be a 2D fighter and appeared in 2021 worldwide. An official website will open soon. Shout out to Banana Shiki. Um, you can click on the article for some scans of the pages um, featuring character art and some gameplay. Um, yeah, this is cool. Um, it's, it's a very fast fighting game. Kind of in the vein of Dragon Ball Fighters and uh, Guilty Gear. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Next up is you. Well, I can't find Run Godzilla on the store. Okay. But <laughs> so, maybe it's not available quite yet. Um, over 700 PS2 prototypes and demos released by Game Preservation Group. This is uh, by Wesley Inpool for Eurogamer. A video game preservation group has released over 700 PS2 prototypes and demos. As reported by VGC, Project Deluge includes 752 PS2 prototypes or demos made for Sony's console but never officially released. The Hidden Palace and the Internet Archive worked together to catalog and upload all files, which amounted to a whopping 806 gigs of 
data. The files were given to the Hidden Palace by just one person, an anonymous donor who not only took on the task of backing everything up in their possession single-handedly, but was so overwhelmingly kind enough to let us look at and preserve each item in his collection with no strings attached. Not only does the code release mean anyone can download and play these prototypes and demos, but video game history is preserved. The majority of the items featured are mastered on recordable media such as CDRs and DVDRs, which are prone to de deterioration with time. They come from previews, reviews, localization prototypes, tech demos, and debug builds. Highlights include an E3 prototype of Crash Bandicoot and the Wrath of Cortex, an E3 prototype of Shadow of the Colossus, prototypes for God Hand and Dino Stalker, and builds of Dragon's Lair 3D, Final Fantasy X-2, and Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver 2. The Hidden Palace showcased some of the builds in a 6 hour live stream on Twitch. There's more to come too according to the Hidden Palace. This is cool. Yeah, I can tell by your enthusiasm. Um... I... You know, we're, we're, we're... Very much for game preservation here. And it, it, it's unfortunate that it's getting, it seems to be getting harder to get certain retro games without, you know, because like, the, they're not always re-released. You want to say piracy, don't you? Uh, well, I, I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I, there's also... There, there's also a lot of because I was looking up Game Boy Advance games on Amazon the other day, and to get the actual Game Boy Advance cards these days mm -hmm. online, one they're more expensive, but two, you're you, you find a lot less of them, and a lot of what you find are reproduction cards. Uh, yeah. So, so not official. So the thing is, um, as we'll get soon get into with the main topic, it's that. Yeah. When you want to revisit older games or maybe start with, like, um, the history of a certain genre, uh, you're kind of out of luck because those physical runs are over, more or less, and yeah. whatever's available is what people have in stock, uh, it's used, um, or what people are kind of pawning off for a, a higher payday. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not easy. That's why I, I plan on keeping a lot of my physical games. Yeah. I mean, f physical um, is the way to go, um, but it's not um, as accessible. Not for everybody. Yeah, it's not yeah. as, as accessible for the most people or for a lot of people. Um, but because our main topic is there's a there was a report on Monday... I believe, that PS3, Vita, and PSP stores to be permanently closed in a few months. Yeah. Um, by Kirk McKeon for the game. Do you want me to do it? Or? Uh, I got okay. it. The, the PS3, PS Vita, and PlayStation Portable stores aren't long for this world. According to a source familiar with the situation verified by the gamer, the stores are due to be closed down from July. The announcement is planned for the end of the month. PSPs and PS3 stores are to be closed on July 2nd, while the PS Vita store will stay open until August 27th. After those dates, you will no longer be able to purchase digital copies of games or DLC for any of Sony's consoles mentioned above. The PS3 released in November 2006 and sold a total of 87 million units during its lifetime. The console officially ended production four years ago after 11 successful years on the market and three model redesigns. The PSP enjoyed similar success, selling around 81 million units since its release in March 2005. Notoriously, the PlayStation Vita was a bit of a flop. Sony's second handheld released in December 2011 and sold between 10 to 15 million units across its lifetime. Despite being an excellent title, Little Machine, the handheld recently saw some resurgence in popularity thanks to how easy it is to turn into a portable emulator. If you own any of the three consoles and you've always wanted to download a specific game, now is the time. No doubt the price of physical games will jump once the stores cease to exist. Uh, the success of the Nintendo Switch proves that there's a market for portable console these days, so perhaps one day we'll see Sony have another shot at a handheld. We might get a Doom game where you talk to monsters, talk to them where you talk to the monsters first, but you never know what. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. Um. So, 
Yeah, the so I my fr I have a friend who has a PS3. She doesn't play it that much, but I was telling her like, hey, you uh need to make sure you check that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I currently have a PlayStation TV, um, like the Vita TV mm. console, mini console, um, which allows me to download and play PlayStation 1, PSP, and Vita games uh, to some extent. So I think I'll be loading up or, or filling up my, my profile with a few choice RPGs from the bygone era, which... It's, it's frustrating because I get it. If a thing doesn't make money, why keep it around? I get it. But at the same time, shuttering these uh, stores and libraries means if there's no alternative, that is, that means that we're also shuttering history like the foundational text of what makes a genre a genre or how a franchise started um the legacy of of playstation as you will and yeah jim ryan said as much a few years ago like i don't get why people want to revisit older games it's not a thing i'm interested in why would you want to go back to old dated graphics when you can have state-of-the-art graphics i'm, I'm paraphrasing at this point game, as greg miller would say old game is a one but that's very reductionist. <laughs> I mean, that that speaks to when uh, a game's mechanics or visuals haven't mm -hmm. aged well. Like if I want to be playing like the the old Spider-Man game on uh, PlayStation One, like it's still fun, but it's not as fluid as a modern Spider-Man game, and it's not as good looking as anything of the current generation. But it still has value, um, I feel. It's like I, I made this tweet a few weeks ago, or was it last week, where I said that I, I think JRPGs are the only genre where we hold the old games in such reverence. Like, we, we still um, look back at Final Fantasy VI. We still look back at, let's say, Legend of Dragoon, of Final Fantasy Tactics, of... of, of uh, Lunar, uh, Silver Star, sorry, um, Suikoden. It's like so much is wrapped up in titles that haven't seen re releases, uh, ports, or remasters or remakes. And it's it's such a shame if, if, if Sony decides to close this forever. And the cynic in me is thinking maybe they'll repurpose this in best of. PlayStation 1 Classics, JRPG Edition for PS4 or PS5 or whatever. Or maybe they'll leverage this for mobile re-releases. And like, uh, it's, it's such a bummer. It's such a bummer. Um, do you have any thoughts on this? Any games you want to revisit from the bygone era? From uh, the PSP <laughs> and PS3 era? Yeah. Well, I wish they would port more stuff, like you know, a, a, a re-release of God Hand, because God Hand is on the PS3 store, I believe. Yeah, it's a PlayStation 2 There's classic. There's a that's, ton of stuff yeah. on the PS3 store. Yeah, there are the, all those PS2 classics, a bunch of PS1 classics. There's um, on the PSP, there's supposedly the best version of Final Fantasy IV. Um, debatable, but sure. According to according to our friend Nadia, debatable, um, but sure. Um, there's, I, I don't know. The, <laughs> there's a lot. There's like, but Death Junior. <laughs> sure. There's like, uh, the Suikoden series one through four. There is like Ape Escape, the old Crash Bandicoots, Tekken. Um, there's Clonoa. There's so much, so much history there. Um, Let's just hope that game preservationists are working at this since they have a couple months. Yeah, I'll be like if, if the announcement drops and it, it'll give me like a month or so time to get what I need. I'll probably be going on a spending spree and get like a lot of JRPGs. Maybe some that I'll never get a chance to play, but I at least know in the back of my mind that they're safe in my library. Yeah. But luckily a lot of the big games from PSP have been ported, yeah. but like 
not all of them. Yeah, but I also saw on Resetera that there's another problem that we should be thinking about. It's the kernel battery for yes. the consoles. My both of my PSP, both of my PSPs don't work anymore because like the battery yeah so unless you have an engineering degree or know your way around electronics um if you can't replace that dead battery um the system won't be able to sync up with the software battery for the network and then Mm -hmm. it will basically die so um i i don't know what sony is thinking like microsoft is having such a good good is success with really beating them in that department. Yeah, with with backwards compatibility and um, having everything from Xbox One available on everything uh, that is Xbox Series. Like it, it's mind boggling that they're willing to give up on that legacy. Uh, it's, at it's baffling that that like Sony was the one. Well, not the. I don't know if they they weren't the. They weren't the first. They, they weren't the first. The first. No, 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 no. But they were the. Well, no. Like, it, it was a selling point uh, with the PlayStation yes. 2 and the PlayStation 3. And 3. Um, the first PlayStation 3, yeah. at least. And Although, weirdly enough, the second PS3, I remember, it couldn't play PS2 disc, but it could still play PS1 disc. Yeah, they removed a feature. Uh, I don't know why or it's how. Very interesting. But it's probably a, uh, it was probably a cost-cutting... Um, Form factor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's so baffling. It's so baffling. Uh, yeah, it's I mean, they also put out the PlayStation Classic a few years ago, like a couple of years ago. Yeah, and I didn't do that well though. And they didn't even support it or market it that well. They, no. it, it kind of felt like they were piggybacking off of a, a Nintendo success with the NES Classic and SNES Classic. I mean, the library of of the games they selected wasn't that great maybe that was a a factor mm-hmm. in why it didn't sell well it, it was also 50 hertz instead of 60 hertz it's like uh, it was such a cynical move on sony's part and it's i i don't know it, it it if anything it feels like they're back to their old uh ps3 era um ways where it, it's it's kind of arrogant sony and what they think they're the king of the world so they can do nothing wrong and i mean you don't get to the number one position for no reason so by all accounts they might be thinking whatever we're doing seems to work so we're going to keep doing that um i'm just so bummed i am so so bummed and you can't even buy old PlayStation 1s or PlayStation 2s or PlayStation 3s or PSPs or Vitas. It, um, they're not readily available. And they're if, if you want to buy a secondhand one, they cost so much. And should something break, you can't turn to anyone for repairs because who knows how to repair these things? Maybe a retro game store or a used game store. But <sighs> it's so frustrating. It's so, so frustrating. Yeah. I mean, if the PlayStation 5 was available to a mass audience, I, th- yeah. I think it wouldn't be such of a hard blow. But the PlayStation 5 isn't available to me, for example, who's been struggling since last year to get a PlayStation 5. And uh, it just sucks. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Um. Here's to the future, I guess. Um. Do you have any games? You- the all digital future is not as great as some people well, well, want it to be. Um. A counterpoint to that is when you see the the digital storefronts on PC, they still have a lot of old, old, old games. So it's not yeah. it's not a question of digital future is bad. It's about the companies behind the digital futures that can make also, bad you decisions. Remember, licensing is a whole huge thing that's going to be, could be an issue in the future. That is true. Um, it has been an issue. And they're probably not uh, porting or remastering or remaking these games because the, the source code has been lost due to time. Um, so there's also that. And again, there's a lot of licensing stuff because the PS1 classics 
on PS3, there are a lot of like Disney games. That is true. That are probably not going to be remastered ever. Yeah. Like the Toy Story and Little Mermaid and yeah. whatever else they have on there. I mean, Sony, you have a lot of money. <laughs> make make a sacrifice, a small sacrifice. Yeah, do something. <laughs> not not this. Yeah, not this. Anything <laughs> but like this. this. Yeah. Not like this. Yeah. Oh well. Um, well, it's just. Well, it's it's then, it's also not official official yet. So uh, yeah, that's true. Maybe. In the meantime, Sony's like, whoa, uh, I think we, we, we hit a nerve here. Um, let's not do this. We're going to make the PlayStation 2 classic. It only has three games on it. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. I mean, ha- half of the, like, several of the PS2 games have been, like, remade or remastered. <laughs> That would be on a PS2 classic. Yeah, not enough. Not enough, but they, it's also still a DVD player. Yeah, <laughs> imagine. <laughs> um, yeah, but it just reminds me of how like eventually the 3DS store is gonna go away too. That is true. Like, um, we don't know when. Um, it could be sooner. Uh, at least not. We know when, in I think it's already gone in Central America. If I'm not mistaken, um, remember that story? Yeah, from a that's, while that's back? probably true. But like I said, it's but for the rest of the world, I don't know. It's it's not a bad thing per se to go all digital. Um, like for a lot of people, it's a lot cheaper than importing. Like for for example, me, if I, yeah. if I had to import a new game or buy a new game, it would be what what you would regularly pay for sixty dollars. It would be for me between yeah. eighty and a hundred dollars. Um, but the issue is that with like with, with how this is with with stories closing and stuff mm-hmm. if your console with those games on it if something happens to it and you can't fix it you're not going to get those games back yeah if you got a new con- if you got a different console yeah cuz you won't be able to download them anymore yep unless no i don't think you can do that no uh, uh, like unless you maybe if you save them to a hard drive but i don't know if it how well that works it still wouldn't uh, and it might depend on the yeah, uh, it might, it may depend on the console. As and well. uh, if you're if you have a PS Vita TV or a PS Vita, the the uh, storage disc, the the SD card thing, you you had to buy separately because it was oh that weird thing. It was proprietary tech. It's not in 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 uh, in supply at the moment. Like it it's. People are buying up that stock, so that's also driving up the price. And it's such a mm. a, a cluster uh, fracas of 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 decisions Sony has going on. Like, uh, yeah, it's it's I'm I'm so bummed. I'm so bummed. Like my girlfriend yeah. um, has been trying to help me get a PS Five too. Um, um, like we have family in America who has also been trying to get a PS5 not being able to get a PS5 coupled with this news had her go like you know what screw Sony we're going Xbox so yeah that that's where we're at at this point <laughs> I mean I have a PS5 and you know, you know you know how I feel about Xbox right now yeah because of my Xbox but like you know I'm planning on getting another one and my PS5 has been running fine and I, but I realized I have to get, cause they don't have PS2 on PS4, like that part of the store on PS5. That is interesting. At least from what, when I tried to search, uh, at least when I tried to search Star Ocean. What about the Star Ocean if it's 3. already in your library? If it's already in the library, I th- you're good. Okay. Um, cause I have PS4 games on, or PS2 on PS4 games on my PS5. Yeah. Oh well. So so you're good. So I'm gonna have to hook my PS4 back up and download a couple, th- uh, a couple things that I've been waiting to get. Yeah. I uh. Um. And it's gonna be like probably the last time I hook my PS4 back up, <laughs> which I wasn't expecting to do. But you know, Sony's got us making weird moves in the pandemic. But uh, I digress. Sony's just making weird moves in general. Yeah. Oh well. Well, we'll see. Yep. Well, that was us for this week yeah um, we were a little briefer but like it wasn't 
this week hasn't actually been that huge for news. I think everybody slowed down because uh, all the Monster Hunter Rise coverage. Well, there is that, and uh, I think it's Games Radar that has the future games showcase going on at the moment. Yes. So I think tomorrow uh, we'll have more news to share, and that will ble- I mean, bleed in next week. Yeah, that will bleed <laughs> into next week uh, organically. But we'll see. Is that going on right now? Yeah, it's going on right now. Okay. Because I didn't know what they were showing in that. Um, so. uh, a bunch of stuff. Or not right now by the time people listen to A this. bunch of stuff yeah. previously announced and a couple of uh, unannounced things, I assume. Because they said they were going to do some Square Enix related stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that was us for this week. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you mm-hmm. for hearing us rant. Um, we'll be back next week with a fresh batch of news items to go through. Uh, yeah. Um, this has been Errol. This has been Jason. Thank you for listening. Please be safe. Yep. Please be kind. Be safe. Wear a mask. Wash your hands. V- get vaccinated if you are able to. Yeah. Um, but also consult your doctor if there's any history that that that, yes, that make sure you consult your that doctor might conflict with the vaccine if you have any health yeah. issues that you're concerned about so, um so yeah but there's a light at the end of the tunnel yeah we're almost there we'll see you <laughs> next week okay yep. bye Matinee.